Hey there, I'm Galahound19, and we're going straight into another Dragons episode! And yes, this is a sword! Best birthday gift ever! Well, that intro was boring! I mean, why waste time talking about the video when you could just start the bliming video? Our dragon narrator, Francis Freelance, was right in the middle of a book signing in a library that was unfortunately half empty. That's negative thinking right there. It's half full. And I don't need you narrating everything. I trust the audience can figure things out on their own. A majority of confused eyes fell upon the dragon nerd, for he has forgotten that he is the only one there who can break the fourth wall. Yeah, why you... Uh, now that I got your attention, I am Francis Freelance, Dragon Nerd and Beast Chronicler extraordinaire. I'm sure you've heard all about me. There was a somewhat jumble of no's before someone said, Yeah, I know you. You're that bloke who can't shut his pie hole. No. I see you've come back to ruin my sequel. Galahound19 is clearly running out of ideas. After an hour of needless bickering, our dragon narrator finally got started. Who's wasting time now? Oh, why, you... Anyway, I have recently documented some of the most bizarre breeds of dragons. And I think I'll start off with the Hydranic Emerald Scales. An amphitheater of the most baffling capabilities. It can... An amphitheater what? An amphitheater. Imagine a snake with wings. And please don't interrupt me. Now, as I was saying, the life cycle of this creature is truly fascinating. For it's born to a nest of 10 or 15, with less than half reaching adulthood. For in its infancy, it will reside on the ground, feeding off of algae for days or even weeks at a time, but eventually would have to feed off of something a little more substantial. So they would sneak into the nest of other dragon species and snatch and feed off of as many of their eggs as possible, which is mighty dangerous, but is that or starve to death. So these creatures evolved to be adaptive and grew to be clever. And once the Hydranic Emerald Scale has grown, very long stupid name by the way, it would then grow a pair of wings and a very tough lever-like armor around its head and along its spine. It can extend its serpent-like body from 25 meters to 150 meters by dislocating each spine segment individually how disturbingly fascinating is that? And it can also crack its own skeleton to squeeze through cavens, fissures, and, well, just about any confined space, really. And with these new traits, it would be hunting much larger prey. It can coil and bind dragons more than twice its size. And for times when that's not enough, well, did I forget to mention, this creature can shoot the scales from its own body as projectiles, like a, a splash of emerald shards. A truly dazzling yet devastating spectacle. At close range, they can reduce a lesser dragon's hide to Swiss cheese. But of course the creature will have to take the time to grow its scales back, so it's more of a last resort kind of thing. But if you could see it without getting skewered, it is quite a dazzling thing. Now I swear it, my ventures are getting more and more bizarre. I can hardly stand the danger if I wasn't just so drawn to excitement. Now, this one is named the Platinum Wing Star Dragoon. Sounds like a 10-year-old came up with that name. 
Well, maybe it was or maybe it wasn't. We won't find out if you won't stop interrupting. If you couldn't tell by Francis's tone, he was getting angry. His scarred face was turning a bright red. And the needless narrating isn't helping. Now, as I was saying, the Star Dragoon is one of the most combative dragon breeds to date. Able to combat multiple dragons and beasties. Adept in land, sea, and air. Once fully grown, these creatures reaches to a height of 25 to 28 meters with a wingspan of 30 meters. Where their kind are smaller numbers, they are widely renowned for their strength and durability. And the secret to that is in their biology. For you see, each time these creatures do battle, their muscle fibers and bone structures will exponentially heal faster and stronger than before. Oh, but they don't stop there. You see, the Star Dragoon shed their scales and claws every 10 years or so for them to grow back stronger and stronger until eventually those claws and scales will become stronger than diamonds. Why, I actually tested this theory. I went and smashed a diamond against their scaly hide. Let me tell you, that was one regrettably expensive experiment. Oh boy. But enough about that. What's more interesting is the Star Dragon's behavioral pattern. Why, they're not just a bunch of brutish beasts. They are intelligent creatures with an unwavering determination to protect a fragile ecosystem from the more docile of dragons. They have even at times protected human villages, believe it or not. Now I said before, the Star Dragon does not back down from a fight. However, if an imposing dragon submits, it will let it live, as long as that beast leaves and never ever returns. Hey, quick interruption here. Now, I could suggest some of my other videos, or I could suggest someone else's videos, like My Hero Academia in the Savage Lands, or DC characters as dragons, all done by drawing with Mr. Slavada. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Anyway, he is like this, this YouTuber artist who posts super fun content every Tuesday. You should check out his channel. I'll be sure to leave a link for you guys. But besides that, let's get back to the dragons episode. Oh, you gave someone else's channel an honorable shout out. That's mighty generous of you, Galahound. What are you babbling on about now? And who is this Galahound bloke? Someone who wouldn't spend so much as five minutes to work on your lame character. Big mouth bathroom boy. Now, back to our regularly scheduled story time. To describe this creature, imagine an obnoxious knight riding a silver chariot. Then imagine that turning into a dragon with some of the shiniest scales you've ever seen. That's weirdly specific. Yeah, well, everything's weird. Either go with it or go home. Now, as I was saying, this is a rare form of dragon known as the silver tail rapier. Residing in the outskirts of France, this dragon grows to a slim 10 to 15 meters with a wingspan of 18 meters. Now what this dragon lacks in size, it makes up for in speed and mobility. For you see, with its lightweight armored hide and agile body stature, this dragon can move up to 190 miles per hour. Oh yes, if you're enthralled now, that's not even half the details I have cataloged right here. For you see, where this dragon has no callus towards humans, it is rather prone to violence, especially with other dragons. Its razor sharp claws and metallic scales certainly gives it an edge in a fight, but its most lethal trait is the blade-like protrusion upon the end of its tail. 
Now, the bone structure at that point of the tail is heavier and stronger than every other bone in the creature's body. And the blade protrusion is sharp enough to carve through solid stone in a single strike. Therefore, this creature is sought out as a glorious challenge for dragon slayers, and its hide is extremely valued amongst trade merchants. Which, unfortunately, led to a time where its kind was hunted to near extinction. But thankfully, Mother Nature intervened. For you see, in recent years, this dragon's kind had evolved exponentially. Almost like magic it was. Which could be a factor depending on our ever convoluting universe. Uh, anyway, this dragon has developed an uncanny ability of popping off his armor. You heard correctly, popping off. Like every muscle at once propels its armored hide from its scaly body, leaving nothing behind but soft skin, which in some counts makes it more vulnerable. But its speed will go from 190 to 255 miles per hour! Oh, and its armored hide is just as valuable after it's popped off. So thankfully, that's one less reason to go ahead and kill it. Personally, I absolutely protest against the hunting of dragons. Unless if that dragon is burning down cities, then something has to be done about that. But if the dragon's minding its own business, then I say, Mind your own business then. Now, this dragon here might as well have nasty written all over its wretched body. The Golden Zoa Dragon stands at a massive 27 to 31 meters with a wingspan of 35 meters, and it is widely renowned and feared. Some people would even call it the World Breaker. But me, I would call it a whole lot of ugly. Now, this rare golden colored beastie comes out of hibernation every hundred years or so. Once awakened, that's when it's at its most dangerous and its appetite is at its most ravenous. At this point, it will scour and destroy the landscape until it is consumed one third of its body weight. And once this dragon has eaten its fill, it will then go to seek out other dragons. Why do you ask? The Golden Zoa has a myriad of abilities. One of its most interesting yet disturbing ability is within its venom. It is potentially lethal to just about any other creature. However, the venom reacts very differently when it is introduced to a dragon's bloodstream. I haven't quite figured it out myself, whether it is through magic or a biological component. But somehow, once injected, the venom places a dragon under some form of hypnosis. I mean, I know of a few parasitical insects that share this ability, just not to this extent. The hypnotic properties of this venom varies between dragon breeds. The weaker the dragon, the stronger the effects. However, with dragons as strong as the Star Dragon or the Armored Shalconda, the venom won't take hold of them but would more likely slow them down. But for those dragons that have fallen under the Golden Zoa's control, their behavioral patterns aggressively change with raised adrenaline and somewhat nullified pain receptors. There have been a few rare occasions where these infected dragons would sadly eat their own young. Unable to control their impulses, these infected dragons would follow, fight for, and die for the Golden Zoa. But don't go thinking this gold-colored beastie can't fend for itself. Its claws and talons are strong enough to rip a lesser dragon in half. Oh, 
and another one of its interesting yet disturbing abilities. It can spray condensed fluids from its eye ducts. These fluids are so flammable that they catch fire when they are exposed to any form of heat. This dragon also has a healing factor, so advanced that it can recover from injuries that would be fatal for most dragons. However, this healing factor takes more nutrients than the body has. Therefore, the Golden Zoa must drink vast quantities of dragon's blood for its healing factor to work properly. But even that isn't enough. For you see, each time the Golden Zoa heals itself to cheat death, it will also lose certain body functionalities. Their hide will get weaker, their muscles will atrophy, and there had even been a few rare cases where they lose their immunity to sunlight. They'd become albino and would have to dig burrows for themselves to hide in or risk being burned by the solar rays. And that's about as much information I have gathered here. Now, does anyone have any questions? Yeah! Why is your accent so corny? And is Freelance even your real name? Is Bathroom Boy your real name? I never said my name was Bathroom Boy. My name is... Now here's the usual spiel where I say if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, then like, comment, and subscribe. But for the meantime, how about checking out some of my other videos? I'm sure you'd like what I got. Anyway, I'm Galahound19 and this is bye bye